Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Connecting in. Give me one moment as we do this. As I go and do this. Blah, blah, blah. Perfect. Okay. Hi. Good morning and welcome. Um, I'm excited about today. I got up this morning. I got to meditate. Um, it's been such a beautiful weekend since we had the spring equinox, yes, and I wanted to talk about it because we are heading into the east direction for the medicine wheel, and what does that mean to you, and how is that going to be in alignment? So I wanted to take this time to talk to you about crystals, talk to you about um, being a Mesa carrier, talk to you about the direction that we are getting ready to head into because it's spring and spring is full of planting new things, new growth and transformation. I love the spring, right? I like the spring and I like the summer. Um, I'm okay with fall. Not so much of winter. Winter's hibernation. So um, I'm waiting for you guys to get on, and then I'm going to give you what's to come and what does that mean for the medicine wheel um, as we shift and change directions. So the first thing that I want to do is move over from where we have come from. All right, perfect. I see it now. Sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulty just came up. I was reading it. Um, so where we have come from, right? We just came from the West direction and the West is all about self-care. It's about your body. It's about hibernation. And it's important to know that as you're moving through each and every season, that you're going to carry a little bit with you each step of the way. You're not just going to you know, be a clean slate and go into spring and be like, aha, it's springtime. Let me just um, dive into this without carrying something from the West or from the previous season coming in because it's all connected. So as you move forward, you're also thinking about yourself um, kind of like the overview of yourself, okay? You're looking down what happened during the winter, what happened in February. February was a huge month for us as we have a push-pull uh, frequency with us. It means that you will sit there in your, in your life and want to move forward and then something of old beliefs will hold you back or put you back at where you were at the old frequency. And we kind of want to navigate and align with that. Where do you want to be at? Where do you want to move at? And it's hitting us hardcore to release the stuff that doesn't work. So before we get into the east direction, the new direction that is presented to us, I wanted to show you my Mesa carrier for the West, because this is what helps me along each and every season. And working with the medicine wheel in my life has, it's not only helped me become more aligned, like I don't get lost in my thoughts anymore. I know that there's a higher purpose, that there's spirit with me helping me. I just felt my spirit guides come in, which is beautiful. Um, so my mesa is not a traditional, <laughs> just not a traditional tile cloth, but mine is so special because a dear friend went to Malaysia and brought this back for me. And it's just, it's my favorite uh, spiritual cloth. So that's what I use. So let me, let me see if you guys can see this. Let's see if we can unwrap it. Oops, it goes this way. There's a certain way to open it, but that's okay. All right, so my west direction was all about releasing, and you can see I have these wonderful crystal beings inside it. And I'm going to share with you um, my experience from the west. And then you guys, I'm actually going to teach a whole class on them being a Mesa carrier and how to um, find the crystals, because you guys know I love crystals that work with us and guide us into the right direction to move forward in. Oh. Okay. So the first thing is first, you will always have a 
a crystal in the middle of your mesa. If you think about the medicine wheel, complete circle, yes. And then you have a crystal to represent each equinox. So you're gonna have a crystal for the east equinox, and this is currently mine for the west. So west, again, is all about body, it's about self-care, it's about um, really hibernating, tuning in to what your guides may have told you or what you what your messages need to say to you or what's going to come up in the upcoming year, what do you need to work with. It's a period of quietness. So for me, I spent a lot of time healing, <laughs> a lot of time on my body, a lot of time figuring out what works for me and what doesn't, a lot of time realizing that I have to give up coffee. <laughs> and my crystal that I worked with for the whole equinox was the clear quartz. Now this guy is gorgeous and helps me with um, healing in general. So bringing in all of the energy into the main crystal. So this is what I worked with for the whole entire equinox. It always goes into the center of your medicine wheel and um, you can take your medicine, you know, you can take it out when you're ready to work with it or when you need something. This crystal is special because it has all of the crystal Reiki symbols. You may know that I teach crystal Reiki. Um, it has all of the crystal Reiki symbols within it. So when I'm talking about healing myself, I would always ask, what crystal, I meant what crystal, what symbol do I need for the day, right? What comes up for me? What do I need to release? What do I need to heal? And Crystal Reiki has this amazing ability that has all of the symbols that I can go, oh, I see that, or I feel that, or I know that, or this is one that I'm going to come into alignment with today. So it helped me in my body. It helped me in my mind. It helped me in my spirit really get focused on what my agenda is and what I needed to do, what my focus is. Because this work is, we always want to look on the outside, right? always want to look on the outside of us for the answers and help. And this is so personal and deep. So this beautiful crystal has all of the crystal Reiki symbols um, programmed into it. And it also has the winter equinox programmed into it. So that's how I used this one. I love this one. Okay. My West direction. Actually, technically you always start in the East, but only because I pulled the west direction crystal out. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> so the west direction is kind of like, what do you need to let go of? Or what do you need to um, release in order to heal? And for me, I have my amber. So amber helps with the physical body. Oops, sorry. Um, it also helps with illnesses. It helps with, um, it, it's one of my favorite crystals and my name. So I'm kind of like... You have to have it, <laughs> but it's a fantastic crystal to work with when you are healing the body. And many of you know I'm pregnant and I also have autoimmune issues. So when I was releasing, connecting in, I was working with my amber, especially when I needed, needed to use it or put it on um, certain aspect of my body. Okay. In the north direction, I worked with my apocalypse. I love this guy. Oh my goodness, I love this guy. Like, I love the path of light. And this one helps me connect into different dimensions. So that's your north. Your north is all about um, your spirit team, your guides, right? And connecting in with the messages that were there. So Apophyllite, when I'm going, I, this one I used in a different way. I used into meditation. I used into journey. I actually traveled into the crystal, and I would always meet my spirit team through there. So that's how I used that one. And then in my east direction, I had my Amazonite. So Amazonite helps with your purpose, your life purpose. It helps with direction, um, knowing which way you're going to go and what you're going to do. And East, we're going to talk about in a minute, right? Planting the seeds. What are you going to do? So helping to connect with your authentic truth. Oh, I love it. The East is about your third eye and your throat chakra. So this is going to be super, super fun. And then your South direction. So your South direction, 
I always think of it as creativity, as fun, as abundance, as connecting in. And I used a selenite. And you may think, well, why? Because there's so many crystals out there that are actually like, you know, fun. <laughs> Like you could have used the sunstone, you could have used citrine, you could have used these upbeat kind of crystals, but the selenite wanted to work with me. So I went for my selenite and anytime I need a boost of creativity, it's interesting because it would always connect me in with my guides in the south direction. And, you know, when you're journeying, you can go through different experiences. So that is, that was my medicine wheel for my mesa that was created. And it looked something, if you guys can see that, something like that, okay? And I work with the stones and I will be teaching a class on how to really incorporate the stones, how to work with them, how to pick them out. Um, but that is, that's what I used for the last direction that we were in. Now we're going into the east direction the east direction and that means that I get to clear I get to clear out my mesa and reprogram all the things that I programmed into it and still have a bundle of fun sometimes people like to pick out the four stones that are calling them program them and set them into place I don't um, but it is one way that you can do that you can go to you know a park or you can go to um, a nature place and as you're walking along there will be stones that call you or maybe there's crystals that you already have that call you and as they are speaking to you you can receive messages for them and some people like to start with four crystals all together I am not like that I really like to sit it may take me a month to actually what am I working with where do I want to go um, so my, even though you, you look down and you're like, oh, it's four crystals, it's extremely planned. It's, uh, working with your spirit guides and communicating with them. So for today, we're going to talk about the East direction that we're moving into. And I want you to pick a crystal that you will work with the whole entire spring equinox until the summer equinox. And the one that I chose to work with is rainbow moonstone whoops can you see that guy so pretty and she she's a goddess i mean really she has tons of feminine energy within her i'm trying to find there's this beautiful rainbow that comes through which is not coming through right now Boop. keep forgetting left means right and right means left okay but anyhow that's moonstone it's rainbow moonstone um and this is the one that was calling me because one rainbow moonstone was a do it cleanses out your energy it cleanses out your chakras but it also allows you to communicate with spirits so spirits of uh, nature all the way to galactic beings in addition it's really good for emotional healing and trauma um, emotional healing to release and let go of things that are assisting you know in your life um, but as I was moving forward and into the east direction it kept saying work with me work with me work with me so this sweet girl is going to be the center of my Mesa for the next um, next few weeks so I'm really excited about that but you can pick out whatever one is calling you. Maybe there's something that you are trying to connect with. Like me, I know in my head, because it's this is career month, right? <laughs> this is the East, um, what I want to build or what I want to create or what I want my visions to look like. And uh, Rainbow Moonstone will also help me assist. When we were working in a lot of times in the south is also like burning away things then i got to use my fire agate so it depends on how you are feeling where are you at what do you want to plant in the east direction so let's talk about the east direction okay what are you expecting what's what's coming up for you the east direction is all first of all every direction has like a time that it's most prevalent or those are strongest to work with and you think about the east 
you know, shamans, when we are creating our medicine wheel, we actually start in the East. You stand in the East. I had a neighbor when I was growing up that used to go outside and pray to her grass every morning for growth. And she would start by praying in the East to her grass. So it's the morning time. It is the best time when the sun is rising, setting a new day, setting new intentions. And that's where I want you guys to start with for your routine for working in the spring equinox. Where are you going to be at, right? It's all about your mental body, your mental state, your clarity that's coming through. So as you are sitting in the east direction and you are starting your day, you may want to start off with gratitude. Gratitude can lift your vibration. Gratitude can also expand your heart. Um, some people make lists at night for their gratitude. I really like to just be grateful that I woke up. <laughs> I had, um, I actually had two friends that died in their sleep unexpectedly. So every morning I wake up, I say thank you so much just for my breath. Thank you so much for my family. Thank you so much for my legs that are walking today. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a vessel of the light. Thank you so much. I mean, there's there's a mil for Chick-fil-A, I don't care, <laughs> but there's a million things that you can be grateful for, which will lift your vibration and start your day off in a better space, right? Number two, I really like to add intention to my day. When I woke up this morning, I said, what is the thing and what is the thing that I'm working on? What am I going to be addressing today? And I heard the word expansion expansion and I'm like what the heck is expansion mean <laughs> what are we doing with expansion and then I sat down into my meditation and we are growing and it was interesting because my aura was expanding as I was thinking about the growth that we are stepping into the seeds that we are planting in the east direction because this is when we plant the seeds before we get to reap all of our harvest at the end of the year so you have to set yourself up. You have to set yourself up for intentional space of what you want to create. Intentional space means, you know, who do you want to be? Who do you want to become? What do you want to do? How do you want to be perceived? How, um, you know, what kind of role do you want to play as a mother, as a wife, as um, a career woman? Who are you and how do you want to step into that? So this is where, and this is the most important time and the most potent time to work on the third eye, to get your visions clear and set, because we just came out of hibernation. Hibernation was speaking with our guides, talking to our guides, and they filled us with all these ideas and things that we want to go through or who we want to become or get an RV or get a bigger house, whatever it is, all the transitions that happen. They come to us with ideas and these ideas go into your third eye and your third eye is saying, I need clarity. I need to visualize the thing that I want to do or how I want to manifest it to be. So in the morning, when you are creating your intention of how you want to start the day or how you want to become, you're always aligning back into the previous season of all those ideas that trickled in. And let's say you didn't write them down. Let's say you didn't have a journal and wrote everything down and went through your journey. That's what I do. I go through my journey, I identify crystals and what time period and what's going on in my life and create this, this beautiful map of what you plan to have for the future. The East direction always goes back to the childhood too. What are some things that you wanted to become or wanted to do? For me, I was all over the place. I wanted to be a nun. An environmentalist. I wanted to work in the criminal justice um, arena. I think that was it. Oh, a chef. <laughs> Those were my dreams, right? So as a kid growing up, I had different areas that I just love and I still love to work in. So how can I manifest them and create them into this bigger picture within my third eye? How can I get vision on that or clarity around that? 
Um, so that is your your third eye, right? The ideas, the intellectual part of you. It's a very masculine time, the springtime, because you're constantly having the wheel go and coming up with ideas of how things could work and the potential. But it's also a throat chakra time because the throat chakra is all about your authentic truth. Your authentic truth is who you want to really become, not what everybody around you says that you should become or who you should become. It's about you being true to yourself. We call that the authentic self, what feels right to you versus what you should be doing. Should you be going to work from you know eight to five because it pays the bills? But if you're not happy and living in your truth, then you would be doing yourself a disservice. So it's about connecting your third eye and your throat chakra together so that they come into alignment during the east direction. So as you're manifesting and as you start to have all these creations around you, I want you to really come into alignment of your clarity for ideas and visions for this upcoming year. There are some things that you're not gonna be able to control. Like I'm having a baby. So guess what? I can't put an RV and traveling into my lifestyle right now because I'm going to be a new mom, which means I'm going to be home, which means there's still COVID out there. So we are on lockdown, <laughs> right? Those are things that are out of my control. I can't tell my little guy to come next year, right? I has to come this year. So knowing that there's things that life is providing for me because it's always 50% us, 50% the divine, we allow that space to come into our field. And then you also have this creation of what you hope or become in the future. And you're working together with spirit to manifest the things that you want for this year. It's extremely important to have intention every day. Have intention, have clarity. Where do you wanna go? What are the baby steps to get there? I'd like to be an author but I can't be an author if I'm not writing a page, right? If it's all up here, from here to here, it needs to work. This is all about communication. This is about writing. This is about speaking. So you're gonna connect these two centers together for this season and see what you can create and manifest. Um, for guides, you will always notice that there's gonna be you know, like there's a bird around you, a hawk. The hawk is one of my, my all-time favorite spirit guides because they see the whole picture. So if you're stumbling or if you're not sure where to go or what to do, you can also call upon a bird to assist you because they fly at higher planes and they can look down and see the overall picture. So if you get stuck, call upon a bird. You can call upon the eagle, the hawk, um, the, the, what did I say? Oh, I like the crow and the raven. They've been around me a lot lately. Those kind of birds, just talk to the birds and say, hey, I need some assistance. And then when you're done, you can always create your mesa, right? What are you working on? What are you doing? All the directions around it will help you with your plan. The whole entire point of a mesa is your physical connection in with your spiritual connection. Every single time I do a session, guess what comes with me? <laughs> because my spirit team's in there, my apples are in there, my, my intention, my direction. So this becomes the most important part of my reading in order to open sacred space for my clients. So it's not just... It's me, right? It's me in a, in a mesa. So it's not just, oh, I made it and it's done. You actually get to incorporate and use it all throughout the season. And like I said, it's very involved. It can be very involved depending upon which degree you want it to be involved in. But I encourage you to go out today, look at all of your crystals and pick one crystal that will kind of be the foundation of this equinox coming up. Well, it's here. <laughs> it already started, <laughs> right? My equinox started off with a baby shower, which I was really excited about. Um, but I also had to do some health procedures. 
So I'm still releasing the stuff that I needed to release in the winter time moving into here. Um, so I want you to pick a crystal that speaks to you. Does it have to be, does it have to be a charger? It does not. Can it be a tumbled stone? It can be. So if there's something that you, you look in or you go into and you're like, you know what? I think I need to work with this crystal. I think it's calling me. Then you can bring forth the crystal. This is my citrine. This is for summer and abundance. <laughs> and you can ask, can you work with me? Would you want to be part of my mesa? Can you help incorporate new ideas and abundance into my life? And most of the time they will say yes. Sometimes I get a no because they have different purposes. But that's when you learn to connect in with your crystals. That's when you learn how to connect in with yourself, your guides, your team. And the crystals have a whole new experience with you. So many people think that crystals are about sitting down, holding, meditating, um, and that that's, that's what you do. You just, I meditate and that's it. But there's so much to them. You know, they're healers. So sometimes crystals don't want to be in a grid. They want to help you heal on the physical body. Um, sometimes they will help you with journeying. There's so many different things that crystals do. So look through your home terror. I call them your crystal team. And I want you to ask a crystal that's calling out to you, do you want to work with me this spring equinox? Do you want to work with me in the east direction? Are you good for clarity and helping me see my visions come true? And through this process, you will be able to create your own mesa. So I hope you enjoy um, this whole new energy that is coming through. I don't have, and I, I can't see anything on here for comments, um, just because the way that this is set up right now. Oh, I just erased myself. Now I'm here. Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions at all or any comments, it says comments not set. And I don't know why, if it's restricted or if it's protected. Hmm. But um, I will be on shortly to do some readings. Um, probably, I don't know, in a few days. Because um, I want to do that as well to see what crystal is best for you to start with and what you would like to um, get out of this season. So really think about things from a bigger picture right now. You're connecting in with your third eye, with your throat chakra, with your crystals to create an unbelievable, fantastic season. So I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment or ask me any questions and I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.